So uh, to introduce myself, I'm Prerit Bargava. I'm, I'm a Red Hat Distinguished Engineer. Uh, I'm the kernel team lead. And uh, I'm going to be talking about the, the CentOS RHEL KVI policy. I just want to make one thing clear, because this is a point of confusion for many people. This presentation surrounds the KABI, not the KAPI. We're talking about the binary interface that modules use, not user space. That means we're talking, again, about the interface that modules use to load into the kernel. I want to start with a little bit of alphabet soup so everybody understands what, what the terms we use are. Because I think this is a point of confusion actually for everybody in CentOS that they hear about Y stream and EUS and Z stream and their, their heads are swimming at times because they don't understand what these terms actually mean. I really just want though to concentrate on the top line. I'm going to come back to this slide at the end uh, and give a little bit more explanation about the other two rows. But the top that's labeled REL 9. The, this slide indicates development windows. So the green part here is a six-month window with which we develop RHEL 9.0. All that work occurs on CentOS stream. Eventually, we move to the next version of RHEL, RHEL 9 rather, the next minor release, and then we do something with the RHEL 9.0 where we put it into Z stream development. Every six weeks we release a kernel on that Z stream or thereabouts. They might happen faster due to CVE issues and things like that. Uh, Z stream are, are, are updates for that particular uh, OS release. So we do security fixes. Uh, we'll do uh, occasional features in there bug fixes, things like that. That's what happens in ZStream. So we extend the development. Furthermore, beyond that ZStream window, which lasts six months to the next uh, minor release, we have something called EUS. And the and there there's EUS, there's AUS, there's, God, I, I can't remember all, that's why I labeled this slide alphabet soup. There are all these different, uh, phases of extended support, and we collectively refer to those as EUS+. Plus. Again, I just want to, for right now, for you to understand the different phases of development that can occur. No. No, it never did. We got rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back again to the slide in a few minutes, though. So, to explain KBI, I again, it's this interface that is used within the kernel for you for users to be able to load modules in. And here's what we said we've done for RHEL eight and previous releases, starting at about RHEL three, RHEL four. It depends on who you ask, really. We, Red Hat made this guarantee. If a user compiled a module in, on that Y stream, that module was guaranteed to load in all future Y streams. That meant, for example, you could compile a module in RHEL 8.0, load it then in 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, etc. There was a restriction, though. We only protected part of the KBI, and we protected the symbols that partners and high-end customers asked us to protect. So if, that, if a customer or partner used those symbols and built a module only using those symbols, we would guarantee that that module would continue to load throughout that uh, release. We also had something called gray lists, though. And these gray lists were symbols that we said we knew that our partners and customers were interested in, but we couldn't guarantee the stability of. So we put those on a gray list, so that way at least partners had a way to say, hey, I'm interested in that. Please let me know when that symbol changed so I know I have to recompile my module. 
we actually have a very sophisticated notification mechanism at Red Hat that happens to be per, per partner or per customer. Uh, right now, today, I'll get to that in a moment, how we've changed that. So we can alert a specific partner or customer and say, you need to recompile your module because we've made a change. In RHEL 9, we changed that model. And now we've basically taken away that promise. We're basically saying there's no guarantee of KBI stabilization across Ystream releases. That means if you build a, if you compile a module in 9.0, there's no guarantee it's going to load in 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, etc. Period. End of story. No matter if you've told us you're interested in those symbols and you're asking us to freeze it. Where we do freeze the KBI, though, and this goes back to the previous alphabet soup slide is, we kind of in ZStream say, we're not gonna change KBI unless certain circumstances are met. One of the very high bars we have for changing KBI in ZStream is, is it a security fix? Not all, sorry, not a security fix, but a critical security fix. That's a reason we break KBI in ZStream. In EUS, it's even more strict. In EUS, we will never ever break KBI unless we have a critical security fix. So that's the change. As a result of this, what we've told our users is that they must recompile modules every wise stream release. That's the result of that. My word of you, my, my use of the word must here is very strong. It is entirely possible somebody constructs a module using kernel symbols that never change. You could, in theory, uh, you know, uh, actually I saw one the other day that was like this. I'm not going to name the partner, but they just used Spinlock. They used uh, RDMSR to read a, a hardware MSR and print K it's highly unlikely those symbols are ever going to change. Right, but you understand, like, and they objected to my word, my use of the word must here. They're saying, what do you mean we must have, we must recompile? That thing is going to compile throughout the life, life cycle of nine. I said, they're, you're probably right. I, I don't want to guarantee it, but they're probably right. It's possible to do. But users should expect to, very strongly should expect to recompile. I'm just sticking with the word must to be clear on this, what my stance is. Just plan to recompile every release. Let's go back, though, to that alphabet soup and think about what's going on with this. As I said before, we have this RHEL 9 development window that lasts six months. Once uh, 9.1 starts uh, 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 ships and uh, starts its development, uh, the 9.0 release will go into uh, uh, ZStream. But the outcome of this on CentOS stream is you don't have ZStream. You don't have EUS Plus or any of those extended re release support. What you see in ZStream is a constant rate of change. It's always, the KBI is always going to change on, on, in CentOS stream because we're no longer making any guarantee about stability of KBI. So you're gonna ask, well, that's great, but how do I, especially the gentleman in the back, I didn't catch your name, my apologies. Pat in the back there, he's saying, well, how are we supposed to figure out that KBI changed? A couple of things going on here. We do have the KBI, uh, sorry, the kernel ABI stable list RPM package. That's something you can look at and examine and say, did any of the symbols I'm interested in actually change? We're, we are producing that for uh, 9.1. You could compile your mo module nightly, which is actually by far the best way to go. And that's something we're, we're telling all our partners and customers, just that's a cron job. Well, a system, a system D user, uh, what, uh, come on, come on, come on, hey. <laughs> You can do that though. That's easy enough to set up and just have it throw an error and say it didn't compile tonight because something changed. 
and CentOS 3. We are doing a global email list. Uh, that's going to be announced within the next few weeks. I don't want to get too far into that, but it's something that anybody can go sign up for. So if the KMOD guys are interested in it, they can sign up and get notifications for when these symbols change. Our stance right now is that we will announce changes for any kernel symbol, but that is we're debating about the volume of that change and what that actually means. So with that, that's it. I told you it was going to be boring, but I purposely kept it short. You have to give me points for that, right? So I'll see if there are any uh, questions. I blew everybody away. Look at that. No, no, no. Stick your hand down. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, so it's generated per kernel build, and it actually contains a list of symbols that are protected that that uh, we're we're offering some semblance of protection on and gray lists. And it, it is possible if you're interested in a symbol that's on one of the either the white list or sorry the stable list or the gray list, you can go and look at that because we keep the symbol uh, hash there for reference. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this might be kind of a dumb question, but are the lists sorted so that if I take like a currently be a stable list, uh, build one and then build two, and I dip them, I can see them properly that way? I believe so. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the actual contents. I'm going to go with yes, and if I'm wrong, then it's your fault. <laughs> it is because uh, we we are not establishing a stable list or gray list until post uh, until about two three weeks. Like I said, so for Rel nine, there was no stable list. Nine dot oh, nine dot one will have one. Yeah. Oh, so they're both empty now, and then you can talk about Correct. Oh. Uh, uh, sorry, right sorry. I, I misunderstood the, the extent of the question there. Uh, in 9.0 .9 is where we establish this change. In 9.1, we're more ready to react to the change. Stable list and gray list? So stable list are the list of symbols that we are guaranteeing some stability for. Gray list are symbols that we that customers or partners or people in this room could go on, go and ask us for protection of a symbol. Uh, gray list is a list of symbols that we are not guaranteeing protection on. However, we we want you to know that something has changed on that gray list. So you can diff the gray list. It's a tracking list, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, which is important, I think, that we should discuss. Yeah. Like, um, with the, the related terms, blacklist and whitelist are being... Uh, are being phased out, correct. So, then, to do that same... Correct. Correct. I wasn't sure what the context of gray list was, but yeah. it sounds like it's a tracking list. Yes. Yeah. No one fell asleep. Kind of amazed. I'm, uh, sorry. When are we going to have the email list? In a few weeks. Okay. Uh, literally in a few weeks. I know that uh, the gentleman's name is Chesmere, who's working on it. Uh, we're getting, we're right at that that stage. Like, uh, uh, honestly, Neil, it's maybe three weeks. Maybe. Yeah. 
things. Neil, it's absolutely, uh, I'm going to repeat that for the, the microphone. We do have an extensive partner engineer program at Red Hat that is worthwhile for all our partners and customers to consider joining. Uh, it gives you internal access uh, as well as a few other high-end high benefits. Being able to schedule your features into a release is important. Uh, I know, I'm not going to say your company name, but uh, for your company in particular, I think that would be a huge benefit. Uh, let's talk after the, yeah. Anything else? Thank you.